Well, today you're going to learn the ancient art of making rissoles. There is pork mince and also beef mince. A couple of cloves of garlic, an egg and an onion. So first of all, we'll put in the pork mince, just because that's what I did first. I'm doing a voiceover, by the way. And then followed by the beef. Now, we shall put an egg in there. We will actually crack it first, as the shell can be a little bit hard to get through otherwise. Here I'm tearing up some day-old white bread. I've cut the crust off. Why? Because this is a really fancy dish. One piece wasn't enough, so I went for the second piece. I just hung it all out there and did it for the team. Two slices of day-old bread. Now, a little bit of HB sauce. A bit of a story behind this, but I'll keep it short. I ran out of Worcestershire. It's a tragedy, but HP is still good. I'll put a little bit of ketchup in, probably about, I don't know, one squirt. You can do the measurement. Now I'm going to add chopped up fine onion as I cut it up, about half a teaspoon of cracked black pepper, some parsley flakes, smoked paprika, and more garlic. You can't go wrong with garlic. Now, of course, we could get a very fancy machine and stir this up. Uh, but we don't. We use the ever long thousand year old method of putting your hand in there. Of course if you're going to wash your hands before you do it, it would be very advisable. You can wear gloves if you're like a bit of a girl, can't handle the pace. No, wear gloves by all means if that's what you normally do. I don't. I can't find gloves big enough to fit my big mitt. Most of the time I'll put a glove on and tear it in half. But I'm just mixing this through. You're not going to try and crush it together like it's really really tight now I did put in the bread there but I can tell you that it was probably needing a little bit more of firming you want this mixture to be firm but also fall apart that's about a quarter of a cup of dry breadcrumbs that's just what I thought at the time I thought I need to make this a little bit more gluggy instead of a bit more sloppy so gluggy it is again you can see I'm not really you know, crushing this down into like a sausage mix. So all those ingredients, they can uh, marinate together or macerate together for a little while. I'll show you what I do when I'm finished. I'll get a piece out, roll it, and voila, one rissole. But let's marinate it for a little while. After that, I got myself a tray, lightly sprayed it with some olive oil. And I'm just showing you again how I make a rissole. Not really that technical, but you don't press hard and you don't squeeze it you want it to cook but you want to be able to be cut into it and for it to you know be tender uh, i forget how many i made this time normally i make about 14 or 15 out of the amount of meat that i put in let's count them something to do while i'm forgetting what i actually did because i'm doing a voiceover that's 11 12 13 14 yeah sometimes i make 15 but today i made 14. so with this I've got some fresh French dwarf beans out of our garden. These are out of our garden. We're starting to produce some good food now. Now what I'm doing is topping and tailing. You can do individual ones you like. I just tend to get a big bunch of them, line them up and top and tail them. And with these I'm just going to cut them in half and then I'm going to cook them in a real special way. Uh, it's a fancy way of doing it. We love it. Uh, but some people don't, they prefer just to steam their beans or boil them. So there's enough beans for two of us. I'm going to crush a garlic like that. If you're a bit worried about the knife, that's okay. I get lots of comments in my videos about how people are terrified how I use knives. But I'm still here today. That's the main thing. So this garlic was being a little bit troublesome, but it came away eventually. And that's going to be enough to be put in with the beans. So a bit of a squeeze, a bit of a cut. Again, if you're a bit squeamish about how I use a knife, which I'm not, uh, look away now. I'll tell you when you can look back, okay? I'm about halfway through the garlic cutting. Uh, you keep looking away. Yep, and I'm about three quarters of the way through the garlic cutting. And you can look back now, okay? So with that, I'll just put a tiny little bit of salt because I'm just going to cut it, smear it a bit to make it a little bit more broken up than it is. 
Again, if you fear the knife work I'm doing, look away. Unless you're mad enough to just stay by and keep looking. I'm just squashing it basically. So that's the garlic that we'll be going in with the French dwarf beans. Sounds fancy, but they're just dwarf beans and they're absolutely delicious. I ate them raw actually. Here is some garlic chives also going to go in there. Now I grow my garlic chives in amongst my wife's roses. Why? Well, they grow nicely in there, but they also keep the aphids away from the roses. Sort of a win-win situation. So how I do this, I put in about a quarter of a cup of water in a pan. A bit different than normal, I know. And what I'm doing is just leveling them out. I'm going to cook them probably about three, maybe four minutes, this method. What happens is eventually the water will evaporate while still cooking the beans. Uh, to al dente. We don't want them soggy at all. So I'm putting a tiny bit of salt in with the beans and I'm putting in my cut up garlic, garlic chives and I will put with this uh, a little bit of uh, butter. Uh, maybe in a bit more butter because butter's good. And I'll put in a tiny little bit of cracked black pepper in there as well. So that's sort of seasoning the beans. Not a great deal, just a bit. Now, like I say, this method is the water that is sort of cooking the beans is starting to evaporate. I've incorporated the butter. That will give you a nice little jus. And when you're finished, which is going to be pretty soon, uh, this is an accompaniment to our rissoles and creamy mashed potato, which I'll show you really shortly. But that's been cooking about six minutes, I guess, and they're al dente. They tasted yum because I tried one. The water's evaporated, we left with the dew and the juice from the actual bean themselves, and they're done. So we'll turn off the gas and now head towards mashed potato land. I didn't bother doing the video of cutting up the potato, mainly because my wife did it and I forgot. Uh, but they're cut up, they're going to be cooked, and in a matter of seconds, we've got a very, very efficient stove stop. Seconds later, well, maybe the magic of the camera, I'm not sure, but mashed potatoes they will be. Of course a little bit more butter, a little bit of full cream milk, don't use half and half, and, you know, the weak flavor. Use real milk, real butter. This is unsalted butter by the way. Uh, just a little tip, when I made all the rissoles up from scratch, I did not put any salt in with them because if you put salt in with the ingredients of making a rissole or even a hamburger, uh, it tends to make the meat a little bit more tough. So what we're doing by not putting it in when it lands on your plate, you can put as much salt on the damn thing you like. So that's how I make my mashed potato. Not really a tutorial video required for that, but that's it all the same. Butter, milk, elbow grease. Job done. Now let's check on those rissoles. Yeah, they're looking pretty good. Australian beef and pork rissoles. I think it's time to uh, take the little baggers out and dish them up. This is a wife's meal. Creamy mashed potato. Uh, which she ate all of it. She's got a good appetite today. So I asked how many rissoles she likes. She said 14. I said fair go. I want some. So I only put three on her plate. Which is reasonable. My daughter came round just to say hello quickly. And another couple of rissoles also disappeared. With some gravy and some beans. Now I'm talking about beans, there they are. They've still got an El Dente, but not soggy. Certainly flavoursome with the garlic and garlic chives and butter. Yum. So like I say, it doesn't look that spectacular, but the taste factor Great is 10 out of 10. And that's me being a judge of my own food and I won't have it any other way. Here comes the gravy. Some people just live for gravy. It doesn't matter what they have, cornflakes, chuck on a bit of gravy. Doesn't matter, as long as there's gravy, things are good with the world. Well, I'll show you now why these are so delicious. Not, not this bit, but the next bit on the table when I'm about to eat. And that is, they're not tough uh, rissoles, or meatballs you might want to call it, but they're firm but tender. They are superb. The flavour with the pork and the beef is definitely worth trying. All I can say, 
if you've never made rissoles before, and this is the king of rissoles, by the way. I hope you do. And if you have been, thanks for watching.